Good morning, everyone. Welcome to What is ADHD? Webinar one of our free webinar series in celebration of the 17th National ADHD Awareness Week. This webinar is brought to you by Lenovo Philippines in partnership with the ADHD Society of the Philippines, the National Council on Disability Affairs, the Department of Education, Miriam College's College of Education, Smart Communications, and Colony Design. I am Fiel John Maria. I will be your moderator for today. I am an adult diagnosed with combined type ADHD. All right. So to introduce this webinar's resource person, we're very fortunate to have with us not just an expert on ADHD, but I think the best person we can get possible to start things off because of this person's unparalleled energy. Of course, I'm talking about Dr. Francis Xavier M. De Malanta. He's a board-certified licensed medical doctor with more than 25 years of leadership experience and in international training in childcare relations and advocacy. He's the chief of the section of developmental and behavioral pediatrics at St. Luke's Medical Center, both in Quezon City and in Global City. He is the board member of the Pediatric Society, where he's also the director of the Council of Community Service and Child Advocacy and the head of the Task Force on Mental Health and Children for Youth. Board member and PRO of the Philippine Society for Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics. He's a key board advisor in organizations for children and teens such as the Ronald McDonald House Charities of the Philippines and Children's Summer International Villages. He's a resource speaker for uh, our national media outlets such as ABS-CBN, DZMM, ANC, CNN, and GMA7. And he speaks on pressing issues regarding child health and development. He's a key opinion leader for virus pharmaceuticals. Um, and he does module formation and lectures nationwide and internationally. And finally, he's the founder and medical director of a Child's Dream Foundation in Baguio City, a special education center which provides intervention and holistic care to the underserved region of northern Luzon. Established in 2003, it continues to change the lives of over 6,000 families. His practice of medicine is guided by the healing presence of God and his passion for service. He's committed to celebrating each child's gift and believes in validating strengths and weaknesses to nurture meaningful relationships. He hopes to inspire and empower families and attest that as we all share our stories, we can work together, impact other lives, and change the world for the better. So without further ado, our speaker number one for What is ADHD, Dr. Francis Xavier M. Dimalanta. Hey, good morning, Doc Francis. Nice morning, to see you Gail. again. Thanks for that very kind introduction. You made me sound bigger than what I really am. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one thing's for sure, no. Uh, when, whenever we, we listen to you, it's kind of like, boom, we're just glued on the screen. <laughs> Let me just tell you guys, you're in for a treat. If some of you guys don't know um, AD, about ADHD, you just have to observe one or two things. Either the content of his speech or yung behavior namin dalawa pa magkasama kami. <laughs> and you'll know what ADHD <laughs> is, right? Yes. Okay, yes, so Doc Francis, you. I'll turn okay. it over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Fiel. And thank you to the ADHD Society of the Philippines. Uh, congratulations on your 20th year. I'd like to start my lecture with a prayer, as I do with many of my lectures now. Lord, let me be the change I want to see, to do with strength and wisdom all that needs to be done and become the hope that I can be. Set me free from my fears and hesitations. Grant me courage and humility. Fill me with spirit to face the challenges and start the change I long to see. Even if I am not the light, I can be the spark in faith, service, and communion. Let us start a change we want to see, the change that begins in me. Amen. So with that, uh, as mentioned earlier, this is the first of a series of talks uh, over the month, Converse Control Connect. And I am honored to have been invited. I think I'm invited every other year, on the even year, so I'll remember, uh, to speak before the parent group that has pushed forward the cause of ADHD. Next slide, please. So what is ADHD? Almost all children have times when their attention or behavior veers out of control. And for some children, these types of behavior are more than an occasional problem. So children with ADHD have behavioral problems that are so frequent and severe 
that they interfere. Again, here's the key word. It has to interfere with their ability to function adequately on a daily basis. Now, there are many myths and facts about ADHD that it um, only impacts children. But the reality is this is a lifelong disability. I don't even want to call it a disorder. It is actually a strength if we're able to use it positively. ADHD isn't a thing. It's like everybody gets distracted, but it's not true. There are some who may get distracted, but still be able to function well and some who won't. And another misconception is that ADHD children or adults are being lazy. It's not that. They cannot put together what others can. And uh, if they tried harder, it wouldn't be a problem. In fact, I've had children telling me, Doc, I'm trying so hard to be, behave, but I can't. I don't know how to behave. So understanding a child coming from this uh, point of view will make you give them some allowance not to give them some slack. It, it, it's like uh, we're not making an excuse, nor are we saying ADHD should be an excuse for anyone's behavior. But here I feel that the child who is most uh, disturbed or mo creating chaos is a child that needs more of our love and attention. Next slide. Let me begin with this video. Let's watch it. That being said, what is ADHD? Again, we follow the DSM-5 criteria, which has evolved over the years. It's a persistent pattern of inattention and or hyperactive impulsiveness that interferes with functioning or development as characterized by these two. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pe mentioned about their children having this and they have all the types. As, as you will recall. And again, the key word here, it has to exist for more than six months that will impair functioning. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are some signs and symptoms of ADHD? These would include distractibility, poor impulse control, forgetfulness, inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity, again, beyond what is normal or average for a given age, because all of us will be distracted and all that, right? Now, what are the symptoms? This would include being disorganized, lack of focus, difficulty giving attention to details, having trouble staying on topic while talking. Many of us do this, right? So this will fall under inattention. Hyperactivity, a child who's fidgeting, squirming when seated. And when you talk about a child, a nursery or a kindergarten child who keeps moving, and a teacher who will ask that child to just keep still, it's difficult. As a child, you need to learn by touch. You need to move. And so it becomes more difficult. That's why it also has to be present in two situations, both at home and in school, and impairing that uh, function. They have trouble playing quietly, doing quiet hobbies, and being impulsive. Impatient teacher, me, I want to answer right away, having a hard time to wait for their turn, blurting out answers before even someone finishes asking them a question. 
So usually ADHD is first identified during childhood, but is often would often persist into adulthood. So it doesn't go away, right? Although adult ADHD is more common than once believed, not all children with ADHD will become adults with ADHD. Now that's important because again, as Fiel has mentioned earlier, and I think um, I, I would be uh, admitting, as I have done in one of our ADHD conference, and I'm not sure if this will be helpful for our audience, I was diagnosed to have ADHD while I was training abroad. And it came as a shock to me because I finished my re residency fellowship and my mentor there just said, Francis, you're living. So I use that to uh, tell the parents of my patients, anyone who has ADHD can become anyone they want to be in the future, provided we get the support. And I would thank my family, my mentors, who have all been supportive of me, not even knowing the condition that I had before. So it changes across the lifespan. Some symptoms, you know, the hyperactivity will fade over time. So probably, I'm not sure if, Fiel, I'll use you as an example. You don't have the hyperactivity anymore, but you're inattentive, right? The same symptom may be expressed in adults. <laughs> also, um, next slide. Uh, is there anything good about ADHD? And I'd like to restructure or reframe our minds about this because there are positive attributes that may be difficult to notice when coping with all the challenges of ADHD. Here they are. Diba? Fiel is creative. Fiel is exuberant. Fiel is emotionally sensitive. Interpersonal intuition. That's a gut feel. Different from a gut feel that, you know, you have empathy and ecological consciousness. We share the same gifts, don't we? Now, when children have ADHD, their behaviors have a profound effect on the entire family because their high activity level, moodiness, yun, maraming masyadong emo, okay, and problems at school can generate a great deal of tension for the entire family. Mom and dad is often called by the principal, okay? So uh, it, it, it becomes a, a, a hard thing for them Hyperactive children seem as though they need to move constantly, frequently making excessive noise. Again, as I mentioned, exuberant, full of joy, physically intrusive behaviors with both parents and siblings. Mom, mom, talk to me. Okay, and running through the house. Now, when a child runs through the house and he's two years old, three years old, if he breaks anything, it's the parent's fault. You don't put all the breakables for a child that's two who has to touch everything, right? So set up your house for a child to learn maximally and frequent shifts from one activity to the other, doing one thing, then the other. Be, what I try to tell parents is uh, make, make, make the game child-led up to a certain point, but you have to set limits. Problems following the rules. You tell them and you have to repeat and you say, Anak, I told you a hundred times. Why can't you remember? Hindi nga matandaan eh. Di ulitin mo na lang po. Or, Tasabihin mo, if you do this, then this will happen. They can't remember more than one thing at a time. Many mothers, rapid fire, kumag utos, or gawin mo to, 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 to. Many husbands who may have ADHD can't seem to follow that as well, right? They resent the siblings for not getting into trouble as often as they are. Tas, parang, bakit lagi na lang ako? I, I always feel I'm being picked on. Kaya tuloy, madaling madaling mairita itong batang to, di ba? But can you imagine if a child is already... Uh, dysregulated and then CC go on. Ano ko ba? But you know, the more, you know, diba? fire with fire. But what you have to do is can we sit down and talk about this? Siempre, easier said than done. But then again, what I'm trying to tell you is these children can't stay out of siblings' rooms or things. So pumapasok yan. They start arguing about rules as they get older. Can't keep their room neat. Buti na lang, I fixed my bed this morning. A key thing for all of us, huh? Uh, Fiel, remember this. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is fix your bed. Then your mind is cleared. Kahit na, takpan mo na lang ng bed cover. Wag ka na magtiklop. And I would tell that to all parents. Fixing the bed is not a household chore. It's the duty. Okay? Now, parents will find it easier to do it themselves rather than get the child to do it. What's our solution here? Let's do it together. Itong mess na to. Diba? We have, I have a very messy table. But I call it organized mess. Pag niligpit to, hindi ko makahanap yung papel na gusto ko. Okay? 
Also, for teenagers, what will be the sign? Anaku, channel surfing. Ilan ba ang mga bata ngayon, on the average, have at least 10? Ten ba? Sabihin ko lang five. Five things going on. Diba? They're listening. Many of you probably who are listening to this lecture is checking their phones, looking at other sites here. Okay, I'm not asking you to give me your full and undivided attention. You can listen to me. If that will work for you, then it's fine. Resistance to rules, resentment to authority, failure to pay attention, difficulty completing chores, fidgeting, restless behavior. And then we think of our teens as being, di ba, parang pasaway, easily irritated, frequent emotional outbursts, risky behavior. Bakit? Kasi nga, walang, walang uh, what do you call this, Mag magsa-stop sa kanila from doing something na, oops, I said it, sorry, pero too late, I said it already. Difficulty taking the perspective of others. So they seem to be just thinking of me, myself, I, when they don't have that capacity and messiness. So again, maybe parents, you can live with some mess. You don't have to be really clean. Children who, who are just starting to eat should be messy. So wag niyo namang, wag niyong pilitin yung batang two to three years old to eat neatly, di ba? Kasi they touch, remember? They, they have to be touching things. Next. So, in school, what do they do? Poor school performance or underachievement. Oftentimes, you'd hear your child, matalino po yung anak mo, mami, pero napaka-careless ng mistakes, ganyan. So why not cut them some slack? Ako, kung wrong spelling, pinapasa ko na. Then, tuturoan na lang natin siya sa spelling side. Kasi, mas gusto mo bang magandang handwriting na mali ang sagot kesa sa poor handwriting, pero tama lang. A child who cannot sit still disrupts the classroom. Ito yung parang, di ba, ang sinasabi nila, ito yung parang inspector. Ikot ng ikot sa school, uh, sa classroom. Di ba? Pipigilan ng teacher or hihiyain. That's the worst thing you do to any child. Shaming should never be done anymore. How many in our generation were shamed? You, di ba? Fiel? <laughs> ako, maswerte ako. Maliit lang yung school namin. I was born and raised in Baguio City. And we only had one section. So, I thrived. I think natakpan yun eh, nung first uh, elementary high school because I was I was kind of uh, an honor student. Pero laging second honor lang. Di ba? Uh, then it was a different story when I got to college. So, a child is hyperactive, impulsive, interrupting, touching others. Di ba? Parang they're in your face. How many times have you been said, parang tinutula ka away na, come on, keep, give me my space. But, it's incorrectly interpreted as a disciplinary issue rather than a legitimate mental health issue. I'm not saying it's a disorder. Again, I'd like to call this a special ability, not a disability. I wish there would be a DSM-5 or 6R saying that this is, uh, we can call it something else, not a disorder, because that's so stigmatizing. Next. So, students with ADHD tend to have lower than average IQ because they're not test takers. This may not reflect their true intelligence. And any child with ADHD, no matter what type, is sure to perform poorly on tests requiring concentration, sitting still for long periods, and tests that prohibit breaks or other modifications. Did you know that I had to write down my notes four times before I could memorize it? This was a struggle for me. Why? I'd only remember if I wrote it down or if someone taught me. I, I could hear it. So you can imagine, my, my, I'll read a book, I'll write down notes, I'll write notes of those notes and another before I could remember them. By that time, I'll be too tired. So I winged it. I do four subjects now that are good, then the other so then shift the next. Sem. So this was really a struggle and I didn't know and because I had this condition. Academic tests that require repetition, problem solving, and memory. Oh, hirap, hirap ako mag-memorize. Spelling, math, writing are greatly impacted by ADHD symptoms. Now, learning tasks that do not require concentration and disciplined effort, like comprehension, general information, and vocabulary, are not greatly affected. I hope you don't mind, Fiel. I keep using you as an example para malayo naman sa akin yung ano, focus. But like, you are very articulate. You can talk about many things, right? But, you know, for you to take a test, ah, ba? Para, come on, oral exam na lang. Pwede pa tayo makipag-usap sa teacher. Okay. So, next slide, please. Excessive activity or talking. Ayun, ako, pag nagsasalita, mahirap pigilin kasi mawawala yung trend of thought. So, akala nila, 
salita lang tayo ng salita and we are just uh, pushing our, our 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 issues forward, right? Frequently making disruptive noises, aham ham ka dyan, problems following rules, can't remember more than one thing at a time, difficulty taking turns, inability to sit quietly even when motivated to do so. Poor peer relationships. Buti na lang tayo, hindi, di ba, Kiel? Marami tayong friends. In fact, you're the life of the party. Uh, di ba, people are drawn to you because of a magnetic personality. Kasi parang sa'yo, happy-go-lucky ka lang for everything. You don't even know that parang kuminsan you're too loud already, di ba? Engaging in activity without consideration of consequences. Oops! Oops, I did it again. Should be our song. Low frustration tolerance. Para impatient. Kailangan mangyari na to. Come on. And careless, messy approach to assignments, tasks. And ang hilig natin, Kiel, mag-start. Pero hindi natin matatapos. So kailangan may sasalo sa atin. Kailangan meron tayong uh, naka-anchor na friend, di ba? Who will do things for us. Okay. Frequently interrupting, changing the subject. Patalon-talon. Parang pinag-uusapan mo lahat. Poor peer relationships. Well, ako not always, but because there are some people who can't be with you, they will they will parang uh, push you off. Difficulty sustaining sustained focused attention, and when it is required, it's so unpleasant. Tapos madali tayong madistract. Like for example, now I have to make sure that I'm focused, or else, de ba? I'll, I'll be saying other things here. I can't even present my slides because I'll get I'll get uh, frazzled. Frequent daydreaming, and who says daydreaming is bad? Forgetfulness or absent-mindedness, difficulty retaining learned information, messy work, rushing through assignments, so careless yung mistakes. Losing work, o yun pa, di ba papasok ka, tas di mo dala yung pinagpuyatan mo the night before, tapos you won't turn it in, so teachers will get mad. Then the mom, poor mom, will run to the, to the school to bring the work of the child. So, in enable natin. Sometimes you have to suffer the consequences, right? Frequent impatience, beginning to doubt. And here is the key factor which we have to watch out for. Yung self-esteem ng bata. Eh, from childhood, pag paulit-ulit mong tinatawag yung attention, pinapagalitan sa harap ng kapatid, it erodes it. And time and again, repeatedly, I would say, if there is one thing we want to buy for our children but can't buy, it's self-esteem. So let's not give false praises. Let's tell them, anak, we have to work on this. And always remember, let us, uh, let us uh, praise the child for the effort, not because she got 100 in the test. Many of children nowadays, di ba, nakakuha ng 99. Ang sabi ng tatay, anong nangyari sa one point? Ba't ka nakuha 100? Di ba? That, that, that's really not fair. Ako, tuwan-tuwa ako sa isang tatay, yung anak niya nag-75, nagpa-party. Bakit? Kasi daw lalagpak dapat eh. Eh, pumasa. Diba? So parang let's celebrate. Let's celebrate your child, what they're able to do. Next. So having ADHD can make it difficult for a child to make and keep friends. Kasi nga overwhelmed lahat ng tao sa kanila. Now, this is a critical issue since children's well-being and happiness are affected by their peer relationships. Now, difficult relationships, particularly friendships which they develop from childhood, best Years in life, high school, college, have a severe impact on a child's self-esteem and long-term development. Peer problems and painful rejection are often compounded by excessive or harsh discipline by adults. I was the most spanked by my dad. And well, I, I think uh, because bawal daw paluin yung girl. So kahit dinaaway ko ng mga kapatid ko, ako, I, I had to take the brunt. And uh, what they call this, dad just celebrated his eighth death anniversary the other day. And I would think... Uh, and hope that he's proud of what I've become, probably because of his spanking. Huh? Lumilipad yung chinelas nun. Research indicates that children with ADHD may be punished more often at home and school as adults struggle to correct their negative behavior. So, in peer relationships, intrusive behavior, cuts ahead of others in queue, hindi makaantay. Di ba? Movie, habang uh, pumipila ka sa takilya, gusto mo mauna ka, tas tingin ka ng tingin. Difficulty waiting their turn, pushes past other children during games, talks over other children. Yung parang akala nyo sumisigaw, kaya lang kasi hindi rin niya siguro marinig sarili niya. So he has to shout. Next. 
difficulty listening to others, eto pinakahirap na hirap. Gusto mo kasi matatanggal na yung trend of thought mo pag naunang magsalita yung isa. So gusto mong sabihin. And then, of course, there's this jealousy about other children's abilities to perform, tends to show off or otherwise seeking attention. So hindi totoo na ang ADHD, KSP. Gusto lang niya makita siya when he's doing his best, di ba? So wants to have friends but unsure how to make and sustain this friendship. What else? Begins to unfavorably compare own performance to others, admires others, but also resents how easy life is for them, eagerly seeks friendship but lacks the social skills to be successful, and may have trouble understanding the perspective of others. Again, this is not an all, end all and be all. So you may have a few of this, right? It's not uh, everybody gets to present this way. Emotionally sensitive, diba? Masyadong uh, balat sibuyas. May engage in negative behaviors in an effort to make friends may start using alcohol or other drugs. Kasi nga, impulsive, di ba? Ginawa ko to, hindi ko alam consequence, tas, oops, sorry. Next. Continues to show off with increasingly risky behavior. Either self-esteem begins to drop or sees self as superior to others in order to explain peer rejection. Now, how do I know if my child needs an ADHD evaluation? Year after year, we talk about this. But first, do the behaviors or attitudes that concern you occur, occur more often in your child than in others? Are these behaviors a continuous problem or something that just happens every now and then in response to certain stressful situations? Do they occur in many settings? Remember, it has to occur for six months, both at home and in school, so that you can diagnose it as such. For example, a child is well-behaved, in school but not at home, then I think there's some parenting technique that has to be fixed. If the child is now well-behaved at home but not in school, maybe the school is not the right fit. So this, and I will discuss later, are some challenges we face with this online teaching in this pandemic. Because others may stay focused, others will not. So again, we have to find the right fit for our child. So, if the child's behavior is excessive, they happen more than one setting, your child's short attention span is interfering with learning, they go beyond what seems typical for that age, please have yourself evaluated, the child evaluated. So, how do we diagnose and treat a child with ADHD? Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. O, tignan mo. Na ADHD na ako dito kasi umulit yung slides ko, di ba? Oh. First, I mentioned earlier, it's genetics. Much of uh, the cases we have, they have a father with ADHD. So I often tell my patients, namana po ang ADHD sa tatay, yung katalinuhan sa nanay. Okay? Vast majority of researchers conclude ADHD is a neurological or brain-based disorder. Meaning, Hindi po ito ginagawa-gawa ng bata. Hirap na hirap talaga siya eh. Present at birth or develops early on in childhood. And although our everyday surroundings can affect the severity of symptoms, these environmental factors do not seem to be the only primary cause of the disorder. Research has established that genetics play a powerful role, as I mentioned earlier and as seen in our video. The estimated heritability of ADHD ranges from 75 to 91 percent and this does not mean a parent of an ADHD child must have ADHD. It could have skipped a generation and I've had a few cases, yung mother ang umamin, siya yung may ADHD, hindi yung tatay. So it's not about pointing fingers. It's about finding out who may need more help because right now I also treat father-son tandems. I treat adults because they don't know that what has brought them into this drug addiction, alcohol abuse, and everything may have been an undiagnosed, untreated ADHD while they were children. And true enough, many of them were getting into trouble. Many of them highly intelligent, creative, but were not given the chance because back then, during our time, uh, maybe about 20 years ahead of Fiel or 30, you're young pa naman, eh, diba? Iba, iba yung paghandle sa amin. Next slide. So, at present, there's no scientific evidence that demonstrates media exposure will cause ADHD. Not at all. 
Some researchers even believe that the rise of ADHD diagnosis may be partially related to the influence of modern media and technology. However, the normal development of a child's brain is gained through experiences with real people and objects. As seen in the first video I showed, the brains of very young children are not adequately developed to accurately process media or screen images. That is why the American Academy of Pediatrics says they shouldn't be uh, seeing uh, gadgets before the age of two. Or if they do, at the most, at 18 months, I think they tweaked it already, it has to be supervised. You don't put a gadget to babysit a six-month-old, a nine-month-old, a one-year-old. They will learn to do this before they write. Marami pangit ang writing. O isa pa, normally, ang two-year-old, ganito ang hawak sa pen. Okay? Ang three-year-old, ganyan. E pinasok mo sa toddler school. Pipilitin yung bata who holds the pen this way to go this way when developmentally, hindi pa appropriate. Diba? So I get mad uh, at children having to go to school and being made to do that. We need to bring back play into the lives of children and adults. Then we will be able to help them navigate life better. So inaccurate perceptions of the world, abnormal brain development, attention deficit, diminished reading ability, and because they remain seated throughout the entire day, this is caused by your artificial images to very young children. In fact, it's very difficult for the brain to process listening to it without an interaction, seeing all the images that's going out there. That's why it makes them uh, function that way. Next slide. Now, the perennial question, do sugar and diet cause ADHD? Again, I'll tell you, research has clearly demonstrated that Nutrition and eating habits do not cause ADHD. However, too much sugar, too much refined foods, too many artificial food and food substances with very few fruits and vegetables, red food dyes, deficiency in omega-3 fatty acids have all been suggested as potential factors that can aggravate ADHD. So again, we know the research just won't show that, but from our experience, we know that if a child... Pag malikot, sasabihin, naku, nakakain niya ng chocolate kanina. Binigyan ng lola. Binigyan ng lolo yung, ka yung kalaban natin, di ba, sa pagpalaki. Kasi they'll sneak it in. Konti lang naman. They don't know na ang konti lang naman para araw-araw uh, will build up to something uh, great. So, now, when two or more disorders occur at the same time, they are called co-occurring disorders or comorbidity. And about 60 to 80% of the time, someone with ADHD will also have another disorder. About 25% of all children with ADHD may have a mood, anxiety, or depressive disorder. What else will come with this? Oppositional defiant, pasaway, conduct disorder, yung mapepreso. Here comes in anxiety, sadness, depression, bipolar, learning disorder, autism, sensory integration disorder, and early speech and communication problems. So you can imagine it doesn't stand alone. Now we ask, who can diagnose children with ADHD? It begins with an evaluation. And they are first generally noticed by a child's caregiver. Yung parents or yung yaya, papalit-palit ka ng yaya, siguro naka-anim na yaya ka na in two years. Si dahil hindi mahabol yung bata, hindi maayos yung yung kanilang limit setting, kaya nagiging difficult. So who are they? Pediatricians. Next slide, please. Developmental pediatricians. Teachers are the first to identify this. But the teachers, pag sinabi sa mami at daddy, yung anak niyo may problema, naku, nagagalit yung parents. Di ba? It becomes more apparent in the academic setting. So the diagnosis of ADHD is usually made between five, six years old when they go to school. And school age identification is also easier simply because it is more obvious in older children. So as I mentioned, pediatricians, developmental pediatricians, clinical psychologists, educational psychologists, or our guidance counselors, psychiatrists, neurologists. Many of the teachers would refrain from diagnosing, although they're the ones I will count on. That's why we give you a set of questionnaire. Next slide. You can go to the next slide. Uh, that's why you need to work with a team interviewing caregiver, teachers, healthcare professionals, information from family members, the symptom checklist, medical evaluation, and 
psychological testing. So it's not na naaamoy na namin agad ang ADHD. Not true. The challenge to us is no two children will present the same way. And we need to collaborate with all people taking care of that child to find out, ito ba sa school lang? Ito ba sa bahay lang? So that we know if it really is a disorder that needs to be helped out. And as we always say, a multimodal treatment approach is considered the most effective in children and adolescents, even adults with ADHD. It simply means let's utilize multiple methods and intervention. The goal is to arrive at the best mix of treatment ingredients, working together in synergis synergistic fashion, kaya kami transdisciplinary. Each treatment component enhances the effectiveness of other components. Key elements. Don't be scared of medication, psychoeducation, various therapy skills, training, coaching. And at the end of the day, family, the family support. Look at Mr. and Mrs. Pe. They understood it. They swallowed it. They lived with it and now have successful children. So the primary message of this approach is that no single intervention by itself is sufficient. In most cases, both child and caregiver will receive help, but concerning different things. The exact combination would actually vary and because each child is unique and the most effective treatment is the one tailored fit to meet the needs of each child and their family. So iba to pag only child, pag dalawang kids, na parehong boys, parehong girls, or tatlo may middle child, Kung malaking family, iba-iba. You treat your child differently. And this brings us of how can I help my child with ADHD. Next slide, please. Learn to be proactive, not reactive. So, iba-iba yan. Remove electronics, diba? assign them uh, responsibilities. Uh, they have to have a routine. Okay? Help children make connections between behavior and consequences of those behavior. For example, you tell the child, if you do this, this will happen. So sila mag-iisip. Kunwari, may bata, uh, teenager, ayaw nang sumimba. So sasabihin ko sa kanya, uh, sa, sa parent, ganito ang sabihin mo, ayaw mo sumimba? O ikaw maglinis ng banyo, gamit mo yung toothbrush mo. Edi yung bata, o, sige, sisimba na lang ako. Diba? Parang you give them the consequence of what they won't do to compel them to think better. So help them understand they can choose their behavior. Therefore, they will choose their own consequence. Provide clear, consistent guidelines. Allow natural consequences to be their best teacher. Diba? Kung yung bata, uh, hawak siya ng hawak sa mainit, pag hindi yun napaso, hindi yun magtatanda. I'm not saying kailangan mapaso sila, but then sometimes, diba, they will learn through experience. Use solution-focused discussion. Avoid lengthy discussion. Ang hirap po sa mga nanay, tuloy-tuloy ang salita. Meron ako isang bata, ito lagi ko kinukwento. Tinali yung anak niya, 6 years old kasi ang likot-likot, pinapagalitan niya, almost 45 minutes. Pagkatas nun, sabi ng tatay, anak, anong naintindihan mo sa sinabi ko? Sabi ng bata, dad, meron kang gold crown dun sa taas. Siguro kailangan ako rin may ganyan. So can you imagine? Kiss. Keep it short and simple. Next slide. Manage stress. Ask help from individuals. Again, it's okay not to be okay, lalo na in these unprecedented times. You self-care. When you're less stressed, your child will be less stressed. You pass on your anxiety to them. So uh, self-regulation is ability to monitor internal states. Slide. Okay, so there are 12 ways. I think you'll have a copy of this lecture, which I will share freely with everyone who attended. Okay, hindi yung hindi nag-attend. Next. And I hear we have uh, listeners all over the Philippines. Umuulan man, kasi inuulan tayo ng blessings ngayon. Time management is critical to success. Punishing students for poor time management is not an effective technique. Teachers, please. Lalo na ngayon, online na tayo. So, iba. Next. Okay. It involves four steps. You have to plan, prioritize, schedule, and follow the plan. Provide structure. Ensure that breaks are routinely built into the schedule. 
since we are uh, year 2020, let's remember the 2020 rule. 20 minutes, you're into the watching whatever it is or in school. Give yourself after 20 minutes, 20 seconds to look away 20 feet. Then you're resting your eyes. Kung mahirap pa rin intindihin yun, gawin mo na lang 30, 30, 30, di ba? Pwede rin yun. So basta you need a break. You stand up. Don't remain seated the entire day. Kaya nga masakit yung likod mo eh. Nakaupo ka. The full weight. And mabigat ako. Si Fiel, pumayat na eh. Oh, nasa katawan natin. So talagang masakit. Oh, next. Si Vivian, salamat. Nahihilo na siguro kay interpret sa akin dahil ang dami kong sinasabi. Uh, demonstrate and teach organizational skills, a place for everything and everything in place. Because a chaotic, disorganized home environment is particularly difficult for ADHD children, but not for us adults. Tignan mo kami ni Fiel. Parehong may halamat sa likod. Parehong nandun dun, di ba? Identify expectations, establish consistent rules, and provide clear instructions. They need to know exactly what others expect from them. They do not perform well in ambiguous situations that leave them guessing about what others want. So, again, kiss. Keep it short and simple. Keep it brief. Keep it visual. Keep it novel. New things. Yun ang gusto nila. Communicate. Collaborate with your schools. Next slide. Kasi tinitignan ko yung oras. Eh. Baka sumobra ko. Express confidence in your child's abilities. Next slide. Help children improve their social skills and peer relationships. Next slide, please. Okay. Actively monitor their interaction with others. Okay. And now, this is the more important thing. I tweak this presentation because how can ADHD be managed during the COVID-19 pandemic? Like I said, we were never knew that we will be here eight months into the quarantine, 75 days to Christmas. Nakakatakot na nga isipin anong mangyari sa Pasko. Pero let's remain hopeful to see that star, to see that light within us. Physical distancing measures may cause distress to individuals with ADHD and pose questions for clinicians how best to deliver care within the new restrictions. Many adults are working and learning remotely. Biro mo, naiiyak na yung anak, maiiyak na rin yung tatay kasi hindi niya talaga alam. Sino ba may sabing siya magiging teacher? Tamo, kamukha mo pa to, Fian. Boredom, isolation, loneliness. Okay? Increased lack of structure. Tapos, all relevant service provision should continue via telephone. Many of us, uh, Deb Feeds, I haven't been back to work. I've been doing online consults two days a week only and two to three patients because it gets so tiring to watch the child. Diba? Uh, ibang iba yung face-to-face. -face. Next. So don't be scared of medication. Sometimes a child will need it. Sometimes they won't. And your doctors will be the one to tell you. Prevention of pharmacological treatment may increase health risks. Okay? Could become disorganized, poorly controlled, which would adversely impact the ability. So, hindi po lahat ginagamot namin. Next slide. Wait. Pharmacies may experience delays even in sending that medication. So, make sure you have stock. Next slide. Okay. Monitoring possible adverse effects. Next slide. Okay, with cardiovascular risk, they have to have clinical examinations. Next slide. Okay, behavioral strategies are important. Parent training is important. It's also important for parents to understand how difficult these times are for adolescents with ADHD as the loss of daily school, homework structure, hobbies, friends can be stressful. Bit more, they missed out on the junior senior prom, their graduation, hanging out with friends, in addition to being with their parents and siblings, three times a day, eating three meals a day, unprecedented times. Diba? Never naman eh. Dati, gabi na nga lang tayo kakain, kung minsan di pa sabay-sabay. So let's take this chance, the pandemic, to eat together. They must stay connected with their child, ask about their feelings. Huwag po natin hihiyain habang kumakain. Diba? Kasi kung hindi, hindi yan sasabay kumain sa atin. Mahilig pa tayo, pinauuna yung mas bata. Sabay-sabay. School and teachers should monitor their students, should actively reach out to parents for individual tailoring of schoolwork and care. Okay, create a routine. Slide. Okay, schedule regular times for sleeping. Ito ho, tatlo lang. Sleeping, eating, and physical activity. Hiwalay sa work and homework. Few minutes to come up with a short piece of tasks to follow and schedule chores. Okay. Calm environment. Oh, hirap nun. Next slide. 
practice breathing techniques, okay? Have designated rooms for work, for play, relaxation. Yung mga scents, di ba? Marami na essential oils. Malay mo, nakakatulong yan. Keeping a journal, listening to relaxing music. And, as I said, exercise. I have yet to do this. I attempted, failed, will attempt again, and promise myself <laughs> after today, I will do this. Walking and jogging outdoors. You need the sun. Muulan nga lang ngayon. Next slide. Okay, so, uh, we're about to end. Six essential tips. Keep positive attitude. Wag positive COVID, ha? And no motivated. Make sure all family members know what is expected. Build your child's self-confidence and trust in you. Help your child to follow instructions. Promote better behavior and limit conflicts. Final words, life with a child or teenager with ADHD can be frustrating, even overwhelming. So ask parents, you can help your child overcome daily challenges, channel their energy into positive arenas and bring greater calm to your family. And the earlier, the more consistently you address your child's problems, the greater chance they have for success in life. I would like to end my presentation with this video. I think with ADHD, the problem is that you sort of... Um, okay, I'm going to try to rephrase this because I'm, I'm sort of going on a tangent. What just happened? What was I saying? behaved a lot as a kid, but I didn't mean to. The natural environment of a classroom is very non-conducive to somebody with ADHD. You know, just like this quiet room, you're sitting at this table, a bunch of other kids are all doing their work. It was almost like, like it's sensory overload, like everything is coming at you all at once. I would be trying to focus on this teacher and then all of a sudden I would like snap to it again and I had missed half of what the teacher had talked about. It was like, you're high or something. Like, it was like, it's kind of similar to being high. One of the side effects of ADHD is a sort of an inability or, or at least a tough time staying still, concentrating, focusing on day-to-day -day tasks. I feel like my thoughts are sort of on like a carousel in my brain and it's going in circles and each thought stops for like two seconds in front of my eyes. I can barely grasp it and then it's gone third day I was at BuzzFeed, I was taking some like safety test with my friend, fellow producer here, Caitlin, and I'm like already lost on like the packet. I look over and like Caitlin's answered like the first 10 questions already. And it's just that, that that's like a, the story of my life is like looking over to my friend and being like, how the hell did you just do that? I have been on some form of medication ever since I was 13. I stopped taking medication uh, for me, because I just didn't like the way it made me feel. They curved my appetite, I was losing weight. But the medication provides me with clarity. When I'm not on my medicine, it feels like the smallest tasks are really overwhelming because I can't visualize and focus on the simple process. I have to plan things out, I have to write everything down or else I forget. I don't advocate that everyone go off their meds if they don't need to. It's just, for me, that was something that I felt I wanted to do. It looks different in everybody. I would just wish people were a little more sensitive with like the verbal assumptions they make. I just wish people believed it was real. My ADHD is like the realest thing in my life. Like I can't reach out and touch it, but I can feel it. So thank you very much and I hope you have a good day. All right, thank you, Doc Francis. So, uh, you know, um, the, that, that talk, you know, it, it says, what is, what is it about ADHD? I've been a professional for, I guess, the past 10 years working with people with ADHD, and I can tell you, I learned a lot of things, a lot of new things. It, it goes to show that when you update yourself, you still learn more. And uh, we want to translate that learning as well to some interaction with you, right? And uh, we have a few questions here that, you know, um, uh, we have three questions here that we'd like to uh, uh, ask you. Uh, the first one is from Ms. Joyce Talag. And uh, the question she has is, you know, kindly ask Dr. Dimalanta what his thoughts are about medications. 
is it possible to rely on therapy alone? We started my child with Ritalin, but the side effect involved palpitations and a depressive mood, which we are now treating. Okay. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, not all children have medicated, and we can try other avenues, especially if mo the mom says uh, there are palpitations and all. Uh, again, if the child is able to achieve what is expected of him, then I don't think we have to resort to that. For example, I have uh, children who are intelligent with ADHD. Why would I give them medication? They're already doing well. It will be a challenge for me if they're not able to focus. So we need to help them because uh, when you give medication, uh, they tend to have this, you know, yung sa kabayo, yung may ganito, they'll, they'll tend to focus on things. And the effect goes away at the end of the day. Eight hours for Ritalin, 12 hours for Concerta. So you can stop it anytime. And again, you just have to be monitored by your doctor so that we can address all the other side effects. Okay. So it's not Thank for all. for that answer. No? Yeah. I just kind of want to add a whole my personal experience uh, taking medication is that nowadays, because I like my job, except writing reports, except writing reports, that's the time I take them, you know. Like, so it's, it's, really, uh, it's really different. Even taking medication is not the same for everybody, right? No, parang ganun, no? <laughs> yeah. So now uh, the next question is from Miss Priscilla, uh, uh, Priscilla Marie Mercado. And her question is, my son is nine years old and I am observing these symptoms po sa anak ko. I am a preschool teacher, kaya po may counting background with these things po. Now, her question is, is there a chance for the intervention to work, I guess, kahit po nine years old na siya? How can I help him pagdating sa studies niya? He's doing poorly in academics po. Thank you. So there might be a comorbid uh, learning disorder with this child, right? Or a reading thing that will need some help. So uh, we have to work with the teachers. Uh, there's no foolproof way to help out the child. It depends on whether is it reading, is it math, saan siya nahihirapan. Diba? Uh, many parents will even think, walang ADHD on ako kasi kaya niya mag-computer at 12 hours the whole day. It's something they like. I don't like math. I don't know about you. Hirap na hirap ako sa math. Diba? Uh, pero diba parang yun, we winged it because we had uh, support group. We had friends who would teach us, would be patient with us. Tinuruan tayo eh. Kaya naman tayo nag-survive. And, you know, at the end of the day, I would all, always think it's relational. Everything we have here. You look for your support group, your family. Instead of you, para bang you're uh, chastising your child, pinapagalitan mo parati, ba't pa hindi mo ito makuha? Diba? The child will now lose uh, their belief in themselves and can't move forward. Parang paralyzed ka na. So, just be more understanding. Like I said, the child who misbehaves is the child who needs more love. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 and then I guess where she's also coming from is that nine years old, I guess is it, it sounds a bit late for intervention, but nothing's I guess you would late, you yeah. would go yeah no no nothing's too late you know you could yes. start uh, any it's better to start early I guess right I guess yeah, you would most definitely yeah but 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 you know yeah you can still take your child for intervention at night parang ganun. yeah so uh, the last question that uh, we're, we'd like to uh, pose to you is from a uh, from a person himself uh, who has a condition his name is John Kelvin. And the question is, my doctor diagnosed me with bipolar disorder, okay? I feel like I have ADHD as an adult and as a, and as a kid. How do I tell her that, right? But, um, uh, medyo mahirap sagutin yan kasi tinatanong niya ako what to tell the doctor. Di magagalit sa akin yung doctor niya. I'm sure the doctor may have seen that. But uh, kasi siguro adult, I don't know how old he is already. Like you said, nothing's too late. Second, let's address uh, the cause. Diba, hindi tayo band-aid eh. Bibiyan mo lang ng gamot for like this. And as I mentioned in my lecture, untreated, undiagnosed ADHD can lead to all of this. So ako, lagi kong hinahanap, paano ka ba nung bata? Paano ganyan? Then I try to check, will, will giving you medication help you so that I don't have to end up giving you the uh, antipsychotics unless you need it. So I don't mess with that. I work 
with child adolescent adult psychiatrists because they're the ones who will know which would be uh, drug interacting. Uh, and most often than not, they would allow us to use our stimulants for that. I just want to say special thank you to Vivian. I don't think I cannot be an interpreter. Can you imagine? The hand-eye coordination, listening to me, is a task an ADHD person may not be able to do. So thank you, thank you. And natutuwa ako, natatawa ka na nga lang yata every time I say something because hindi mo alam paano mo yun i-articulate. And it's only now that I've seen you up front. Normally, kasi nasa side kita pag nagle-lecture. So having seen you now, I thank you for doing this. All right. So, uh, yeah. So thank you so much for uh, the lecture and answering these questions, Doc Francis. Uh, I mean, um, some of the things there, like, um, like the talk today really uh, brought it home to me, like me coming from the education sector, like, I want to point out that doctors like Doc Francis want to work with us. No? You know, sometimes there might be uh, tensions and things like that, but as you can see, we all have to work as a team. And you know, doctors, developmental pediatricians and such no, are willing and ready to work with the parents, the teachers, you know, the individuals themselves. Let's all work together and you know, resolve all these things, which is really the vibe, vibe I got from you today. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I do all the examples, okay, as you were lecturing, they do apply to me, like a lot of <laughs> majority of them. That's pretty cool, though. So, okay. yeah, so yeah, once again, I just like yeah. to leave, I'd like to leave some parting words, if you will yes, allow please. me to. Again, yes, thank please. you for, for intro my kindest introduction. Send me a copy, oh, para naman magamit yan ng iba. And thank you uh, that you allowed me to use you as an example the whole time. And you know why that is so? Because I could see you in my screen. So every now and then, I would have reference to you. So let right. me end with this. Uh, again, congratulations to the ADHD Society of the Philippines. Here are some famous people with ADHD just to inspire everyone. And this would include a lot of people who have had great contributions not to society and to the world, right? Our president has mentioned earlier of ADHD Society, Michael Jordan, okay, who is here and who had made so many mistakes but saw it as, uh, saw it as a positive thing. And I would like to end with a quote. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can come out of it. Thank you very much, and have a good weekend. Hey, have a good weekend, everybody. God bless you, Doc Francis. God bless you, everybody. So just Thank a few you. reminders for everybody. If you guys have other questions that we were not able to answer here, if you guys haven't thought of a question yet, and you want to message that question, please just message it to the ADHD Society of the Philippines Facebook page, okay? as well as stay tuned for our next seminar feeling Mr. Zaldi from uh, the National Council for Disability Affairs will be having another stream for that. So just stay tuned onto the page and wait for that. Okay, so this is uh, your moderator, Phil John Maria, signing off. I'll see you guys in a bit.